Simple Cafe E, illustrated tutorials for your electronics. Hey there and welcome. Let's get right into it. As you know, there are a lot of ways to connect your TV set to your speakers. That's why in this video, we'll be looking at all the different ways that I know of for these four input types. But not only that, I'll make sure to include how to do so for both active and passive speakers. And since there are a lot of ways to get set up, I'll keep a time bar right up here so you can see that there's still more ways to go over for that input type. All right, here are the timestamps for each connection type, so feel free to jump to yours now. Great, we'll start off with the popular aux input. Note that your TV will likely have it labeled as audio or line out or even headphones, but go ahead and plug into that. And on the other end, of course, well, straight into your speaker. Okay, so once you're all connected, you may hear your TV through your speakers right away. If not, go to your TV's audio settings to select external speakers. But now what if your speakers don't have any inputs? All they can connect with is this cable, which most certainly won't go into your modern TV. Curious as to why not? Check out this video right up here. Anyway, what they will plug into is a stereo amplifier like this one or this one. But what if you don't have or even want one of these big stereos? Well, you don't have to go so big. A mini power amplifier will be just enough for both your TV and speakers. And they're cheaper and clearly smaller than your standard stereo amp. So now you can plug your aux cable into your stereo's aux port, which may be labeled as something else like these below. All that may be left for you to do is go to your TV's audio settings to select external speakers if you don't hear them right away. Got it? Okay, one last thing before we move on. What if your sound system doesn't have an aux port? No worries if it at least has RCA inputs. Just get an aux to RCA cable, plug the aux end to your TV and the RCA end to your amplifier, most likely located in the back, and it'll work just as well. This cable is also a solution for connecting to your portable speakers if they have RCA inputs. Again, just remember to change your audio settings on your TV if needed. Alrighty then, on to Toslink, aka Optical, aka SPDIF. If you need this cable, check out line number three in the description. Well, this connection is super easy if your speaker does have an optical port. Once your cable is all plugged in, you may just need to go to your TV's audio settings to select external speakers if you don't hear your speakers right away. If you actually have a stereo amp with an optical input port, great. Just plug your optical cable from your TV into it, as well as the speaker wire into the designated color speaker terminals. Don't forget to change your stereo to the designated channel and voila. Or actually, you may still need to go to your TV's audio settings to select external speakers if you don't hear them right away. Now, let's see what we can do if our sound systems don't have an optical input. What we'll need is a sort of bridge between the two, and so I present to you the digital to analog converter. You see, these here boxes have two sides. On the input side, a port for your optical cable, and on the output side, a variety of other ports to send out your converted audio, such as RCA or AUX. As you can see here, you can now make that final connection to your speaker's AUX port, or even RCA if that's what your speakers have. Remember, you can also use this if you have a stereo system with RCA ports. Now, let's say you have a stereo receiver like this maybe, but it doesn't have any ports for anything other than speaker wire. Well, you can still at least use your speakers here on any other stereo receiver within the same ohm range that does have RCA inputs. Oh, and don't forget to change your receiver channel to the one you plug your converter into. But hey, what if you don't have or even want such a big stereo? Well, you can cut down to just the essentials and get a mini power amp, which will still be able to take the cable from your TV as well as your speaker wires. Find it in the description to check them out. Oh, and as a bonus, you can also use this with an aux music player, so you can enjoy those loudspeakers you already have, which are likely to sound better than your portable but small Bluetooth speakers. Have a look up here if you want to learn more. 
Okay, so to wrap up this segment, I admit that two whole devices just to get sound from your TV to your speaker can seem like a bit much. But with these two, you'll be prepared for just about any other situation to get that great sound you're looking for. Check them out in the description to get started. All right then, let's move on to the other digital connection, which uses a typical HDMI cable. This connection is also known as ARC and HDMI audio only. Now your TV may also refer to it as HDMI audio out. Once you're all plugged in, you can plug the other end to your sound system. When it comes to speakers, I've only seen sound bars equipped with this port. But hey, go ahead and check the back of yours to see if you too can plug in directly. If so, all that's left is selecting the correct audio settings in your TV's menu. Check out my slowly but surely growing playlist for further help on that. Now, if your speakers don't have this input, then you can use a digital to analog converter to help you make that connection. The right converter will have an HDMI port on the input side to connect to your TV set and on the output side, be equipped for either RCA, AUX, or even optical toslink, whatever it is that your speakers need. Now, if your speakers don't take any of these inputs, they probably only connect via speaker wire, which needs to be connected to an amplifier like this. And the amplifier should be able to receive at least one of these three connection types. In just a moment, I'll show you what you can use instead of these big stereo amplifiers. Oh, I almost forgot to mention real quick that you may also be able to use these stereo decks if they have an aux input, not to be confused with a headphone jack. Okay then, no aux found? Check the back for RCA inputs and you could be all set. If your stereo deck has neither, know that you can at least keep your speakers and use them with any other amplifier within the same ohm range. Just plug your RCA cable into any of the audio or line in channels and you're good to go. Now I could understand how you may not have or much less even want such a big stereo amplifier. Well if you want to use these powerful speakers, they're going to need an amplifier. But don't worry because you can keep your setup small and simple with a mini power amplifier. These are pretty great because they'll also allow you to play your music through them so you can get back to listening to your old but probably bigger than Bluetooth speakers. Learn more about them in the description or videos above. Okay, back to your setup. Whoa, that looks like a lot for something that seems pretty simple. But if you go ahead and do get these two, you'll be ready for just about any other setup that comes your way. And here we are, to the last but certainly not least, the great classic RCA connection. Now, a lot of TVs will have RCA connectors, but before you continue, make sure that they say audio or line out. Okay, with your RCA cable connected to your TV, it won't be a problem if your speakers have an aux input since you can still use a pretty common RCA to aux cable like this. If you have portable speakers with RCA ports, use an RCA to RCA cable. And once you're plugged in directly, sound will hopefully come through your speakers immediately. If not, just go to your TV settings and look for audio so you can select external speakers. Now then, if you have speakers without these inputs, they're likely to be passive speakers which need to connect to an amplifier for power. The amplifier in turn should have RCA inputs labeled audio or line in. Just make sure to change your stereo to the channel that you connected your RCA cables into. And don't forget to go to your TV's menus and look for the audio settings so you can select external speakers for your sound. That is, if you don't hear anything right away. Now, understandably so, you may not have a stereo amplifier with these inputs. However, if you want to use these loudspeakers, they need to connect to an amplifier. But you can keep your cost and space small with a mini power amplifier. And as a nice plus, you'll also be able to play your music through your big speakers again, which are likely to sound better than your typical smaller Bluetooth speakers. Well, I really hope you succeed. If you'd like to casually learn more, subscribe to get my videos. And that way, when you're looking for your next tutorial, my videos are more likely to appear towards the top of your search results. Feel free to share and best of luck.